Okay, good afternoon. It is a Tuesday. We've got a little bit of fire danger to talk about. We've got temperatures that are going to be kind of warm, but not extremely hot for this time of year coming up. So sort of a, a pattern like we've been seeing where it heats up a bunch and then it starts to kind of moderate a little bit with some of these offshore lows. We'll talk about that. Here's a visual of the inversion right now. This is uh, Mount Tamalpais looking towards uh, Pacifica, San Francisco. The marine layer is pretty shallow. Had a pretty good couple of days. Was down at the Kelly uh, Slater Surf Ranch down in uh, Lemoore. It was hot as, geez, hot as hell down there. Really a fun, fun, fun trip. Um, I'll show you, I'll just give you a snapshot here, but I'll show you some pictures uh, in the upcoming days. But it's just fun. It's a man-made wave that is uh, pretty unique. And it's not, it's really a pretty awesome wave for, you know, it's not like most wave pools are kind of weak and wobbly. This thing's like, yeah, it's Kelly Slater's, right? So if you set it at the, I think it was like CT, the settings on the wave machine, you can set it kind of, and like it would, there's one way which we were on, which is like Kelly's wave, which is like fast and it's pretty, pretty awesome. So that was a good trip too. It got to be with the family. We all hung out. Um, okay. So, and we got the fire danger to talk about. There's a chance of thunderstorms as we go into a little bit into this afternoon tonight, a red flag warning for parts of Northern California. There was some elevated lightning and thunder last night that um, pretty much stayed elevated, right? Uh, which was good, so not, I didn't see any fire starts today. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll start off looking at this loop because it shows you what the fog's doing. I'm a little late today. I've been just catching up on things I need to do. Um, and there's the marine layer. So a lot of fog at the coast. Denson, you're fogged in maybe most of the day we'll see we'll take a look at the visible satellite as well and you can see actually a little clearing showing up at stents i may have spoke too soon look at that maybe a little bit i just was going on the different deal okay so there's the fog it's the visible satellite which i always say is your most valuable tool this is the thunderstorm activity which there have been up by covalo and areas around lake county there have been thunderstorms already i haven't had any reports of any fire started but we'll keep an eye on that um, and then this is just a plug of moisture coming through and then you see more moisture down here this is essentially the north american monsoon kind of firing up and it, it is getting going this is the time of year some air quality issues down in southern california we'll take a peek at that some a little bit of fire smoke in some of those inland basins not a huge uh area cover but still air quality stuff's a little spooky and then the heat in the central valley which is coming down it's instead of in the low 100s it'll be upper lot 90s low 100s so still hot just not as hot there's the red flag warning this gets dropped this evening, and I'm not surprised to see it. I think if I pull up, let me pull up the radar real quick here. So yeah, so you can see up here around Colville, this is radar scope. And you can see there's some the little lightning pop in up by, up by Leightonville over the last few hours. And you see that moisture moving into this area. And I have to say, we talked about this, I haven't been with you in a couple of days, but we talked about it like three days ago. The models were pretty bullish on this activity wrapping back around and creating the potential for thunderstorms. So we are seeing those up in far northern California. Up by Covalo in the last few hours, there have been a few lightning strikes. And that looks as though it's going to continue potentially for, um, for a bit, for a little while. So let me see if I can get out of this. When I say a little bit, I mean a little bit this afternoon and into um, this evening. So we'll lose that. We'll come back here and then we'll load up the model. This is HRRR. This is that rapid update and it's a good model. It updates a really fast. Most models, like we use the GFS a lot, but it doesn't update but couple, four times a day. And there's only two run updates that you really want. And those are off the weather balloons in the morning and the evening. So here we are. Let me see what I can do. I'll start off. Um, you can see where the rain tower. This is simulated rainfall. And this is at uh, 13Z. So coming up on, you know, afternoon. And then you can see, right, I think it starts to get a little right there. That blossoms up pretty aggressively. So this is later on this afternoon. And you can see that that's pretty aggressive all in this area. And that doesn't just pick up uh, the Trinity Alps and, and, and areas uh, east of um, uh, Fortuna. This picks up Alturas, Bernie, 
uh, darn near, not Redding, but Mount Lake Shasta, potentially up around Weed and Mount Shasta. So you see it. And you also see the subtropical moisture or the, the unstable moisture coming in from the desert southwest. So this is a short run. It doesn't go very far out, but you see that moisture really fill in as we head into tomorrow right over here. So for us, it's a, not a, it's a kind of a one and done. Once that area goes through, we are forecast to be out of the out of the thunder and lightning zone. So here's the the forecast. This is the vorticity, 500 millibar. See that trough. See where we are. That always tells you, right? Okay, that's where, that's first of all. That's why we're getting the wraparound moisture because there's the circulation around this thing. So and this is interesting. The model's really crushed it out pretty good so you get this wrap moisture and that's what we're seeing so as we move through time a little bit it kind of falls apart by tomorrow by well tomorrow night wednesday morning another trough or tomorrow night thursday morning another trough kind of comes in here actually this is more church thursday afternoon and that just and again and why am i showing you this mm. Potentially, you could see some thunderstorms up around Lake Tahoe as we go into the 4th of July weekend. But here we are, 3rd, where are we in the, over oh, the 7th July? So let's go back to the 4th, sorry. July 4th right here. So that is that is indicative of the, uh, the, the, the idea that we're not going to have a real heat wave during the 4th of July, which makes me super happy because 4th of July fireworks are insane in California. You don't get me started. But the weather looks... As favorable as you're going to get for July 4th, but in terms of a big heat wave, big air quality issues, not seeing it, and this pattern stays progressive. So that's really what I want to show you. There's a big high build zone. That's going to be a warm up. That's towards July 10th, and there's another big warm up there. This is funny. This low wants to hang out out there. That's July 15th. Man, that thing just lingers. So we'll we'll keep our eyes on it. These are the forecast highs or the highs from today. And you can see where the reds are. That's the hot, the heat, 102 down towards Needles and Phoenix, buck 13. Ouch. Ouch. Just, just spent like 36 hours in the sun in Lemoore. And it was, I mean, it's not horribly hot. Like I know it can get hotter, but it was probably about 103. And it was like, oh yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Because we were in the surfing in that wave pool and it's like, yeah, the water was probably 80 degrees. Air, ambient air was probably yeah probably straight at 100 maybe a little warmer but uh it is yeah where's you out so these are the highs for today these are the highs for tomorrow very similar a little warmer in redding a little cooler in sacramento maybe a little more of a sea breeze for us and then the satellite loop will pick up this uh, tropical moisture some spinners some tropical activity down in near Mexico, lots of activity, a lot of activity in the tropics. So we'll be keeping it. It's that time of year where you start seeing this, this, the hurricanes, the tropical storms start to fire up. And then there's that moisture plume, right? That's picked up. That's the thunder and lightning that we had last night um, in those areas and up, up in the foothills. And then that's kind of where we are right now in terms of cloud cover. So just a big picture. And what you see here is you, you kind of pick out the little low here. But what I really think you see is a big ridge of high pressure here. That's a pretty big high, big dome. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, I'm a little out of the loop. The, I did that thing I told you I never do. I try not to do is like not look at the bowl. I just was surfing, so I wasn't looking. And so it's kind of difficult. You come back in and you're kind of like, oh, you yeah, know, thunderstorms last night. I wonder what the model looked like. And you have to go back and because it, it's important when you do weather, as you know. I mean, because that's why you're watching probably because the more you... The more you watch this, these models day after day after day after day, you understand the pattern recognition component of it. And you understand, oh, this is where I live. I live behind a mountain that's got some a, a funnel. So we get some strong sea breezes. So no, I can't forecast that. You can, though, because you know right where you live. So, I mean, I won't get into it too much, but that's why. So I kind of, I kind of, um, well, let me go back. I kind of got out of the loop a little bit. Heat advisories, Northern Washington. Heat advisories, Montana. Red flag warnings, kind of a little north of Bend. Red flag warnings for us through 8 o'clock. Here's the air quality concern. This is down kind of LA-ish, you know, more Cove Covina, I guess, kind of out in that area. And then extreme heat warning in the desert southwest. And that's terrifying to me only because when you go, I mean, I get it. It's July and it's hot. It's July 1st. 
but when you when you're living in Phoenix and you need an extreme heat warning, that means it's hotter than hot. Because Phoenix is just hot, right? So that's it's spooky. Okay, you see some of the smoke down in Southern California. This is a smoke model. Um, and you'll see it. We'll, we'll click it through here again. But you see there's a couple fires down here. Threw up some smoke. And then you'll see the model as we go into 2 o'clock tomorrow. A little bit of smoke. Keep an eye on that. And then you see this Canadian smoke coming down. Look at this in the East Coast. So that's all from some Canadian fires. And that's, that's a big deal. So air quality, it's higher level smoke, but as it settles in these areas, it'll start to drift down a little bit. So air quality, a thing, uh, not horrible, but you know, running about 50 to 60 parts per million in these darker orange areas, which is an indication of unhealthy air. This is Mount Shasta. And this is, that's some of that unstable. Ooh, isn't that nice? Little rain shafts, huh? Well, look at that. There's a little added bonus today. Gosh, I should live with that. That's awesome. Just beautiful rain shafts. Let's, let's blow it up a little more and go a little further out. So we know what the weather's going to do. Watch the, watch the turbulence here. So it comes in. It was already unstable from last night. Look at that. Little look like some rain shafts. It might be Virga rain that falls, not hitting the ground. But that's a beautiful wow, right? And you see which way it's coming from, right? It's not coming from the north or the west. It's coming on that wraparound direction from the east. What else we got for you? Okay, Mount Whitney. I don't think there's any clouds down there, but we'll take a look. Mount Whitney portal, just beautiful. God, they had nice air quality up there too. Sometimes just inside. East side of the Sierra Nevada gets a little bit sketchy in there with the air quality just because the dust and what have you, but looks like a good day. Um, steamer Lane swells down, but this coming, starting tomorrow's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the swell comes up and it's going to be a hell of a run for 4th of July. Like not just for Santa Cruz and areas that have good south swell abilities, but for like like trussels down southern california malibu it's, it's a really nice looking swell so you'll be you'll be seeing a lot of surfboards on cars as you go through the next uh next couple of days not so much today or tomorrow but then by thursday all right this is uh trussels kind of not a great shot but trussels gonna get some swell oh there it is. they focused it in it's not very big today they're calling it two to three but i guarantee you Come Thursday, Friday, this lineup's going to be packed. There is zero or not a lot of snow left at Mammoth Mountain. It's 68 degrees up at Mammoth. It's kind of funny, isn't it? We were watching people ski down this two weeks ago. So when it goes, man, it goes. The snow, that is. So I decided to take a peek at that. I think that's the last time we're going to look at um, Mammoth. I know, right? Look at this. Brooks Bears. I haven't seen any bears, but oh my God, right? Are you kidding me? Look at that freaking guy. How many fish is it? How many fish are in that pool? Because they're right, they're driving upstream. There's a salmon run. So they're driving upstream to get to their spawning grounds. And the bears at Brooks Falls stand here and just mow the fish. But I mean, I don't, I mean, that's, I mean, I think I could catch a fish there. I really do. I, I, think, I, think, I think if you don't, it's you, man. I mean, geez Louise, right? Let's see if we can do something else. Hey, thanks for hanging in, by the way. I'm dragging a little bit today. It's kind of the heat took it out of me yesterday. Let's see if we can, um, oh, bear. That's, oh, that's cool. Look at you, buddy. Brown bears, not grizzlies. Brown bears are bigger. I know. I wonder, what he, I wonder if he got himself a fish. Um, I would, that probably is. I'm not a bucket list guy because I hate the term bucket list because it just means you're in the bucket. But... Um, and then if you're dying and you don't get the bucket list, then it's like, damn, I didn't get the bucket. You know what I mean? In other words, you're creating strife where there doesn't need to be strife. But I think a, 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 a good aspiration would be to get up here and, and watch this activity with these bears. <clears throat> Just because I've never seen it. I've never seen, I've never seen, I mean, I've seen a lot of bears, but I don't think I've ever seen a brown bear though. Oh, he's got some fish, man. And they're so cute, too. Okay, so that's this is earlier. This is the last half hour. This is not live. And then live is these bad boys. This is uh, Brooks' camera, Bears Live. And you can see the fish. And so they're spawning. This is the moon jellyfish. I've grown to love this because, uh, right? Because, because of that. 
It's awesome. Wow. Okay, so I think we covered it. Red flag warning through tonight. So I think that uh, you know, Bay Area, you look okay. I think in terms of fire concerns, but red flag warnings are red flag warnings. And remember, it's a red flag warning for the potential for lightning strikes. The lightning that went through last night was high base stuff, pretty far up there. So we weren't, I don't think there were any aggressive cloud to ground strikes. And I'm assuming there's a little bit more high convectivity again today. Um, and then as we go into the 4th of July weekend, which is a big weekend, it's going to be temperatures about where they have been. And fire danger will be super high, so be super careful. Okay, I'll see you back here tomorrow.